But your head is on sports grid and knows the QB is in concussion protocol. The backup has a 45 QBR against the zone coverage. The New York D has the most sacks in the league. So yeah, trust your head. It's smarter to be on sports grid. So where are your impressions of Valhalla just for, for folks that have not uh, seen it on TV or didn't watch the Ryder Cups or past majors? You know, they see a, a PGA maybe at a, you know, a Southern Hills or a Bet page or, you know, whatever it may be. And they're like, ah, oh, you know, Valhalla and Louisville, Kentucky. But like, look at the tournaments produced and it's insane. Yeah. It really has. And obviously, of course, I'm a bias toward it. Only on Sports Grid. Dreisaitl could easily, at plus money, get the first goal, the second goal, the fourth goal. Uh, there's a few guys here. You, maybe the prop betting market is not a bad way to look here. Clippers over the map. If I would have told you that score before the game, knowing that Kawhi Leonard wasn't playing, I would have really figured it would have been the other way around. But the NBA is just crazy. In-game live, all access, only on SportsGrid. DraftKings making a progressive move, I think, that most other companies are also going to do or have done in the past. Adding someone from the government or someone you would say in legislation to become their responsible gaming leader here. And in this case, her name is Lori Kalani. And it'll be interesting to see if other companies try to follow suit in terms of hiring former lobbyists to head responsible gaming. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. And welcome in a very happy Thursday here now, May the 16th. It is in game live, and we are primetime here on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Jerry alongside Scotty Wetzel, and we'll have you covered here over the next two hours. And we are getting ready for, well, some, uh, some playoff basketball. One game here tonight. It is the all important elimination game as the Denver Nuggets on the road getting ready to take on the Minnesota Timberwolves. The Minnesota Timberwolves, a team, by the way, there, Scotty, that most people just a week ago were calling for brooms and a sweep, and they were calling for the reincarnation of Michael Jordan. And, oh, my word, you would have thought Minnesota actually already won something. But, yeah, Denver was, like, not so fast here, uh, rattling off three straight. And now they have an opportunity to put their foot on them and end it. And then, of course, just wait to see what happens with Dallas and OKC. But what a difference a week makes in the NBA playoffs, I guess, huh? Yeah, it really is, Joe. It's amazing. You know, we, we got uh, maybe an elimination game, you know, Denver and, and Minnesota. We got uh, maybe an elimination game with the Rangers taking on Carolina. And, uh, oh, by the way, we also have another half tonight, Joe, in which Caitlin Clark has more turnovers, three, and personal fouls, three, than points at halftime, two. So uh, mm. her, her 15 minutes of fame, as I tweeted out, maybe ending after five minutes. But, yeah, you know, that Denver, I remember, Joe, we, 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 I think we talked about it in one of the many shows we've done yeah. together. When Minnesota was up two games to none, the boys in Vegas were offering you Minnesota minus three and a half games, which means a sweep, at even money yep. or pick them, basically. So all you needed to do was have Denver win one of the two games and you would have won an even better, you know, a pick them bet. I mean, that's how much, I don't know what Denver was. You know, I, I, I should have looked, but just out of curiosity, I would have known, uh, I would have liked to know what Denver was minus one and a half games down two games to none, which is what could happen if they win tonight and win it four games to two. I mean, you could have gotten a monster, no doubt, number there, but... Hard to make a case for Minnesota, right? I, I mean, I, I can make a case for the, the Carolina Hurricanes. You know, they're up one nothing, but, you know, heading into tonight. But making a case for Minnesota after being dominated for three straight games like they have, uh, I don't see it against the world champs. I think Denver wins, Joe. It, it, it's going to be tough because Denver obviously made some adjustments after the first two games, Scotty, and it really centered around uh, well, a anybody else will beat us, but 
Edwards. That's it. Uh, he's not going to drop 40 points every game and beat us. So they have literally sold out on everything they've done, given other guys on this team an opportunity to step up. But yet nobody has for Minnesota. And quite honestly, I, I just I don't know what Minnesota can do to combat this. Wasn't Rudy Gobert the reigning defensive player of the year? <laughs> and it call me crazy because Jokic is making him look like he shouldn't even be in the league here. Now, I don't know if that says more about Rudy Gobert. Does that say more about the Joker to you, Scotty? Yeah, you know, listen, defensive player of the year, right? Well, what does that really mean? I tell you, you know, like 74, 75, I think it was, out of the 124 voters actually voted for Rudy Gobert. Like, really, there's like that much of a consensus. He was the best defensive defensive player. No way, right? No way. I tell you, the guy I really pin it on, and I am like, you know, I'm up to here with Austin Matthews, and I'm up to here mm-hmm. with Connor McDavid in the NHL about how great they are, yet their team's always choking a postseason. I'm also up to here with Carl Anthony Towns, Joe. You know, this was his team before Anthony Edwards got there, and they were supposed to be the greatest thing, and he's supposed to be the greatest player in the world. The guy never wins. He never comes up big. He, he's a soft 15, 20-point guy. He should be the one. That should be stepping up. You know, Anthony's going to give you 30 points. Heck, he might give you 35 if there was just one more score, right? And he's supposed to be that guy. He's making a gazillion dollars. Where's where's uh, Carl Anthony Towns? Guy's always hurt, and he never shows up in, in, in big spots. Yep. Uh, it's uh, it's like rinse and repeat with these guys. And listen, Gobert was the same thing when he was with Utah. I don't know why they thought they would get anything different. Uh, Donovan Mitchell had to carry that team uh, because Gobert would go MIA. To the most part, they you know, he was even taken off the court a lot of times in Utah during the big moments because he, he was a liability, certainly offensively, and he's not helping the cause here so far in CAC. Well, he better get it going here. Otherwise, it's uh, it's all she wrote for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Conley, though, from what I understand, is going to go missed game five. He's going to give it a go. But here's the other problem, Scotty. We just don't know. They're better with him on the court. But how much can we trust a strained calf? It, it was bad enough he didn't play in game five. I mean, I give him credit going out there. But he's another guy that's always been hurt throughout his career in the playoffs. Yeah, but at least he's older now, right? I mean, how much can you really expect out of him? You know, give me Mike Conley six, seven years ago, and then this really would have been a great, great team. Uh, you oh, know, yes. So whatever you get out of him, right? You know, I, I can't really blame him. Guy's 40 years old or whatever he actually is, you know. But uh, this team, man, they, the question isn't so much, you know, what's wrong to me with Minnesota, Joe. The question is, how did they win the first two games? Not only just win, but win so easily. Right? I mean, yeah. one game, okay, things happen. And then when they won game two so decisively, it was like, wow, you know, Minnesota's the greatest thing in the world. Like, how did they win those two games? Where is that Minnesota t- a team? Was it all just Denver yep. playing bad and, and not caring or, or not being motivated, whatever the reason? Or, or are we expecting more out of Minnesota than what we should? Well, you know, it's be careful what you wish for, Scotty, because it certainly felt like uh, the sleeping giant was awoken there after beating them twice on their own home court here. And that's the fun part about this is that you, you can't even look at these three straight wins by Denver and be like, oh, they got lucky, you know, a bounce here. They, no, like they have no, thoroughly yeah. beaten Minnesota to a pulp here where they've left no question about it. And to me, It all started with uh, Malone making the decision that anybody but Ant, they're not going to allow Edwards to drop 40 a game and beat them. Somebody else is going to have to do it. And at this point, nobody else has done it. So this game coming up here, bottom of the hour. I am looking, Scotty, my best bet here tonight. And tell me if this makes sense to you. I took the under in the first half, 105 and a half. Um, that would mean, according to this total, Scotty, they're expecting the first half to be higher scoring than the second half. In what world in the NBA is that yeah. ever happening? Why, why am I getting 106 points in the first half, but I'm not, what, I'm getting 100 points in the second half? I, it just doesn't make any sense here. I, you know, I, I say, I'll, I'll, I'll bite, uh, I'll go under the 105 and a half in the first half. I still think the first half has a better chance 
uh, than the second half, but not according to the odds makers, and I didn't get it. That is weird, Joe, right? I mean, we've right? been doing this a long time. Generally, the second half is always higher, yep. you know, even more so in college than in the NBA. But even in the NBA, the second half is generally higher than the first half. That's, and that's way off. You know, that's, you know, 105 and a half, 106. That's a 210, 11, 12 point game. And, and the number is not even that's close correct. to that. So, yep. yeah, that, you know, do you think the defense is going to kick in all of a sudden the fourth quarter with these teams? That, that, that doesn't happen in the NBA. It really doesn't. So, no. I'll tell you the other thing with Minnesota no. is, you, you know, you watch Chris Finch, the head coach. Uh, you know, I watched his post game press conference after game five, and the guy just looked, he looked like a beaten man. You know, for a head coach, you know, not a player, but for a head coach, he just, you know, they were asking him about guarding the Joker, and he, he just had no answer, Joe. He, he was just yeah. like, what do you want me to tell you? I, the guy's 250 yeah. pounds, and he's as quick as lightning, and we've tried everything we can, and, you know, he looked like he had no answers. He really did. So I don't think they're going to have answers tonight. No, uh, that's the, that's the, if you had the answer, you probably would have gone ahead would have used and it, put yes. it out there in the last couple of games. So I'm with yeah. you there, Scotty. But we got NBA playoffs. We've got NHL playoffs tonight. We've got a smattering of Major League Baseball games. We'll go over those when in-game live prime time continues. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bets. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Oh, welcome back in here in game live prime time. And we have got updates for you here across the board. We'll start in the, there it is, the horn, the NHL and uh, the Carolina Hurricanes took a one nothing uh, lead there heading uh, into the second period. And then they quickly scored another goal on a power play. there, making it two nothing now, Scotty, two nothing. Uh, not looking good for the Rangers in closeout uh, situation. So we might be looking at a game seven at this point. What a unbelievable turn of events here for this team. 
Wow. I mean, they're up 3-0, right? Uh, they had a great chance to win game four, although they're going to, you know, hold on. They can't do that. You know, then they lose game five, up one nothing in the third period at home. And uh, now they're down two zip uh, early second period uh, here in the Carolina. So the only thing I'll say, you know, I'll throw wow. out the little uh, little life for the raft, if you will, for uh, the Ranger fan. Don't forget last year, although they ended up losing it. But last year they were up 2 nothing. They lost the next three, if you remember, to the Devils with New Jersey hosting game six in New Jersey, thinking, all right, mm -hmm. we won three in a row, why not, right? And then they lost. Uh, New Jersey did. The Rangers actually had the character to rebound from three straight losses, albeit losing game seven, but that, that's another story. But at least yep. I'll give you a little little something Ranger fans to have hope on, knowing that you know maybe they can oh. get out of this doldrums if, in fact, they lose this Wait game. Wait a minute, so. Scotty. Blow uh -oh. it. Blow it. Blow it. Rangers! Yes! The Rangers answered quickly. Wow! 2-1 wow. now here, Scott, just like that. So why are we not looking at the over, I guess, at this point in the game? Maybe we should at six and a half. Yeah. You know, FanDuel offered a nice prop I played for a couple of shekels, Joe. Will each team tonight, and there's only two games, so four teams, score at least two goals? Plus 130 Ooh. it was. I mean, I, I'm I'm pretty confident Vancouver and Edmonton will score two goals apiece, right? That that's got at least yes. three two written all over it. This Ranger one would have been the only one where eh, maybe two one three one, but uh, you know we already yep. got three. We only need one more out of the Rangers. That that was a pretty good. You got to search for a lot of these goofy plays. I love these goofy bets, as you know, Joe. And that one kind of like wow, I yep. thought that would have been minus money, but you want to give me plus one thirty for each team to get two goals? I'll, I'll you know where did I sign up for that one? So. Looking pretty good so far. Especially that was a big goal like you said, the Oilers and uh, Canucks are were six and a half that total. Yeah. Now, granted, the last right. game went under, but I'm st I'm still scratching my head on how it did. Uh, but the Ranger and the Hurricane game was the game that, if you had pause, it was because of that game was only listed at five and a half. But wow, we're talking three goals in a period and a half here, and. I, if I don't say so, there's some soft goals here, though, Scotty. Have you seen these? Yeah. Like, that was yeah. a slap shot from, at, like, what was that? So, from New Jersey. looks like, you know, that. You yeah. Stop that. Uh, you know, man. What? Holy. Or, or South Carolina, anyway. Yeah. Wow. It's like. Yeah. Crazy. Wow. This has been ugly. an over series. Yeah, but, you know, they keep on putting yes. five and a half, Joe. It's four and one over. You know, these games are going yep. over. We're not getting that, you know, two one that Vegas seems to think should be the score here. It's it's, it's not happening. It's, it's you know, these are all three or no. uh, four three type of games. So uh, and this one's on pace. Again. Yep. Uh, and six and a half remains out there. Uh, pretty much straight up one ten on each side. So. 2-1, Hurricanes over the Rangers right now. We both, Shotty, uh, didn't expect uh, that kind of craziness. Usually we're expecting all of the, the scoring to happen third period. You know, maybe the game starts to get away one way or the other. But uh, here we go. It should be a fun night of NHL hockey. Of course, that Edmonton-Vancouver game coming up. We are have uh, a handful of Major League Baseball games as well here, Scotty, that are up and running right now. The Mets, uh, and who knew Quintana was Cy Young material at this point uh, because he's blanking the Phillies. Uh, it's 2 nothing in that one. The Rays are on top of the Red Sox. You and I were talking before. The Pirates and the Cubs. The Pirates up 2-1 right now at Wrigley in the bottom of the third inning. There was supposed to be some weather. The wind was blowing. And the total, I think, Scotty, was was down to about uh, eight and eight and a half, eight somewhere in that ballpark. Uh, and now we've got three runs here in three innings with a pretty good pitching battle. At least that's what I thought this was here. What what did you think of uh, your Pirates here? Yeah, I, I was kind of you know scratching my head, Joe. Why were the Cubs only minus one twenty or so home favorites yeah. over a Pittsburgh team that's really been just. Awful. They they got off to a great start with like ten and three, something like that. But from that point on, they have been brutal. Cubs, you know, uh, terrific, especially at home. Thirteen and six at home. Six games over five hundred overall. And it was basically pick them with Justin Steele, who has struggled, you know, this year for whatever reason a little bit. But uh, you know, that had to be sucker written all over it. Yet here it is, two one. 
Pir yep. you know, Pirates leading in the yep. third early on. Eight and a half, still available uh, there. And, uh, you know, they just played. I think the Pirates beat Steel uh, a little over a week ago. Uh, so the, these two, uh, two teams have already played one another. They know each other here. You would figure the Cubs give them the advantage at home at Wrigley. Uh, my goodness here. But 2-1 uh, right now, end of third, heading to the top of the fourth. The Astros... And the A's are underway. And uh, Javier Garcia, I believe, uh, on the mound for the Astros tonight. Uh, I took a shot with the athletics here, Scotty, not to get swept because I just don't trust Houston here anymore. Do you? I mean, shocker, the idea that they might all be cheating. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah I know, right? Uh, you know, someone pointed out on my podcast, you know, <laughs> normally if I watch a game, you know, you watch to the end of the inning and then you see the pitcher get checked, Joe, you know, as he's coming off the mound, right? They apparently caught Blanco as he was heading onto the mound to start the inning. That's which correct. Which to me makes all the sense yep. in the world because, you know, if you're going to cheat, you're going to have all this stuff on your hand, you know, while you're pitching, you know, after you're done with the inning, you'll wipe it all off. But I thought that was kind of weird, but... Um, they're the eighth and one straight six of step. Whoa. Wow. Oh, no. Yeah. Aho, just another terrible goal. Uh, the Rangers just let up here. 3 1 Carolina. We are wow. on the way to an over, folks. An over in the NHL. We'll talk some NBA when we get back in game live prime time. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you have? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks still <laughs> exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bet. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in, like, the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in. Certainly no uh, no shortage of excitement uh, thus far. And we haven't even started the all-important game six in Minnesota in the NBA with the champs, the Denver Nuggets, trying to close it out and advance to the Western Conference Finals. Joe Ranieri alongside Scotty Wetzel here on in-game live primetime. We do have, however, a whole lot of scoring going on in this Rangers game as the Rangers, Scotty, are trying to close it out on the road against this Carolina team who, 
I, I think if we're all being honest with one another, this probably should have been 2-2 anyway after four games. But, uh, you know, the 3-1 opportunity the Rangers present were presented, uh, they caught a couple of breaks. They ended up winning a couple of games. They had an opportunity to close it out in game five a couple of days ago at home. They couldn't get that done. Now here's the game six. And boy, oh boy, it's 3-1 already, Carolina. And Carolina has pretty much been playing desperate hockey here, Scott, it feels like since game three. It, it feels like uh, they have hair on fire and there is no tomorrow. And it looks like it's starting to wear down the Rangers here a little bit. Well, that's amazing. Uh, three one. You know, again, the defense for the Rangers, Joe, got caught napping. I mean, it was yep. a simple little dump in off the boards, and uh, Sebastian Ajo, you know, one of the better players for Carolina, picked it up. He got yep. past his defenseman and, and went in on Shesterkin. Oh, you know, the great Igor Shesterkin, Ranger fans are all, you know, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Is he going to come up big and make a big time save? Bail his teammates out? No. Gives up a soft little goal. So all of a sudden, it's 3-1 Carolina. And uh, I tell you, for a series that should have been over, as you said, uh, maybe a while ago, or maybe it been 2-2, but that's hockey, right? A bunch of, you know, one goal, one mistake makes the difference between yep. winning and losing in the postseason. But uh, we're looking at a crazy, uh, may maybe just a maybe game seven in a series that was, uh, was three games to none. So it doesn't happen often, but uh, teams 0-3 in series, Joe, 4-206. and Carolina... <laughs> Might be, you know, again, they got to win game seven. And not Crazy. only they got to win that, but they got to win game six here still. Uh, but, you know, they're in a position to become just a fifth team and over 200 opportunities to rally from 3 nothing down. Mm. Crazy. Well, it, it's so funny because it will, it will play just the what-if game here because, you know, you lost three games to start. So now you're trying to win, you know, four straight, right, to go through. And really, Minnesota tonight, uh, getting ready to tip off with the Nuggets, they have never lost three. I don't think they lost three games all year, Scotty, in a row. So they've row. never, ever had – they've never lost this many in a row, and now they're just trying to stop the bleeding uh, and so they can hopefully get to another game. But I would think the psyche uh, of some of these teams, which is why it's so hard to do, like when you get thoroughly beat three straight games, I don't care where it is. <laughs> You got to start. You got to start scratching your head and going, "Wow, maybe these two teams weren't as close, um, Denver and Minnesota, as everyone thought they were." And quite honestly, for a coin flip series here, lately it looks like there is a clear gap between the Rangers and Carolina. Yeah, you know, it's, it's kind of funny. Three nothing down in the NHL, Joe is. Uh, comparable yep. to two nothing down in the NBA, right? We said four times in the NHL has a yep. team rallied from three nothing down to win a series. Believe it or not, only six times in NBA history has a team lost the first two games at home and rebounded to win the series. And the Denver's in a position to be wow. the seventh uh, later on tonight. So um, wow. it doesn't happen often for these Unreal. teams. I mean, we're seeing some crazy things happen in, in postseason play in the NHL and NBA and like I said, it, it's hard to make a case. I do think Minnesota's going to come out flying, right? I'd be disappointed in them if they didn't show a little spirit the first quarter. You know, if you want oh, to play a little hunch, oh, maybe Minnesota go. first quarter play, first 15. But I think ultimately Denver's going to win the game. So I'm trying to figure out why that wasn't a goal uh, right there in this game where it looked as if the puck had uh, gotten – past Anderson but did it not cross the goal line is that the uh that looked like it was a goal is it not I'm Once seeing it that, now was, Hold on. Scott, what is the rule with the line once it crosses the red all line the between over. the post it just it, it has to go all the way over all the way over yeah the whole uh, you know, has in, to cross yeah unlike in the NFL oh, where close. the tip of the football has to cross the line, line. in yeah. the NHL the, the whole puck has to go over so I'm seeing it. I'm about a minute shocked. behind everybody. But you're seeing that, right? Oh, I got oh, a question. Like, how, how did the? Wow. That's what I'm saying. I, I, wow. I don't understand how the guy didn't light the lamp. I really don't. We'll yeah. talk more about it coming up here at Game Live Primetime.
a surprise winner on the PGA Tour. Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you have? What, what's your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my best. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in game live primetime craziness already in this New York Ranger Carolina Hurricane game here uh, a game six with the Rangers up three games to two uh, uh, and the Rangers got an unbelievable play there great pass uh, out in front and you know tried to go right between uh, the legs there Frederick Anderson and it did. And it was going across into the net, and apparently you got to, you got it has to fully cross the line, the puck, in order for it to count. But we watched it a million times, and you and I are still trying to figure out whoever the dude is with the finger on the lamp who, who's going to light it up as if it was a goal. I have no idea how they didn't signal goal, and because you and I, they had to slow it down for us even to see that they actually saved it. Because if you watch it in real time, you're like, how is that not a goal? Yeah. What's the puck? Maybe three oh. inches, four inches tops, right? So probably about a quarter of the puck, about an inch, maybe a half an inch of the puck did not cross the red line. The, the other three quarters of the wow. puck did. And then this, the stick from Martin, the defenseman, who's, who's by the way, flying yep. head first on ice. He's flying in. And reaching his stick out to make sure the puck doesn't cross the line. He gets the stick behind the puck. So I don't know how the referee yep. behind the goal was in good position, but still he's blocked out by that stick to realize that it didn't cross either. So you got the guy with wow. the horn, and then you got the referee who could call it, and, and they, they, they got it right. I mean, uh, they got it right somehow, some way. Some of these referees do a great, great job. But what a play by Martin, the defenseman to realize that, you know, this puck still might go in, so yes. he dies head first with the stick out extended. Um, if it's that kind of night for the Rangers, you know what, just go home now. <laughs> oh. If you can't score on that goal, oh. then you know what, it, it's it's not happening. Pack the bags. We forfeit. Crazy. Uh, another breakaway for the Rangers that uh, got uh, – they couldn't handle it and get a shot. Uh, but uh, usually guys that lay out like that – you know, who are coming from the other side, they usually help the puck cross it. They don't yes, they yeah, don't hit it yeah. perfectly to stop it. They usually give it more forward momentum because they're flying trying to do anything they can. I mean, all in all, if this thing ends 3-2, you, you drinks, uh, that guy should never buy another drink in Carolina 
for a long time <laughs> if the if this is a one goal game when it's all said and done. Unbelievable effort by we are Bucks. still three one. I tell you, we're getting a, a ton of scoring opportunities, right? I mean, b- both teams are getting yes. like breakaway after breakaway. I mean, that that was a breakaway for the Raiders. And Carolina mm. just had another one. They had one when he scored. I mean, yep. Um, it's yep. three one. I know it's late second, and, and the over under is six and a half still. But I I think we're you know if we don't get to six and a half, it's not because both teams are going from the blue line to the blue line and no one's doing anything. Correct. It's just because. Bad luck or, or, or decent goaltending. Yes. Uh, six and a half, much much more affordable here, but you're right, Scotty. Yeah. Uh, 18 to 11 shots on goal right now. Carolina ahead of the Rangers, but the Rangers have had plenty of high chance opportunities here, and so is Carolina, but Carolina has taken advantage here with three goals. We got about two minutes left to go in this one. We're getting ready. For the tip-off here, Denver Nuggets and the Minnesota Timberwolves will have that for you coming up. And I believe the Philadelphia Phillies finally decided to hit the ball. They are back in it against the Mets, now tied up at two apiece in that one. 3-2 Pirates uh, at the end of four over to Cubs. The Cubs have gotten on the board, and the Rays are still uh, shellacking uh, the Red Sox here, 5-1 in that one no score a's astros and i believe scotty we got a uh, reds dodgers game a little late night coming up uh, on the west coast there as if there's any reason really to look at the reds in this game i'm kidding there is not uh you uh you have to actually score runs to win games in the major league baseball scotty is that how it works because I, I i don't know if anybody told the the reds that i i don't know yeah they they uh, they might want to tell Caitlin Clark that as well, Joe. I don't know if you you're following oh, her no. tonight. Oh uh, no! You know, I'm almost at the point I feel sorry for this lady. I really, you know, not quite because she's making a gazillion dollars, right? But uh, so far tonight, after an inauspicious uh, start to her career uh, two days ago, tonight one of five from the field, zero oh of four from oh. three point land. She's got four points. Mm-hmm. Four personal fouls and three turnovers. So, wow. another, and then they're, they're losing by 18 to, to uh, the Liberty. You know, probably the second uh, best team in, in the WNBA. But, you know, who no, no really cares about that? We care about Caitlin Clark, right? And it's just, it's right. not happening again. It's, just, it's you know, it's going to be, well, she's not going to come in and be Michael Jordan. You know, she's just, did not say she's not going to be successful. But anybody thinking, like right. her over under tonight, Joe, was 20 and a half. And, she got to 20 last game, but in garbage time points. And, and she might get to 21. Who knows? But it's not going to be in real-time play. It's, it's going to be when the game is over and she's just out right. there. Home debut, not uh, not not going well for Caitlin Clark. Well, you know, and listen, and, and it's, kind of, it's kind of not fair to her, but it, the publicity is – it's not the first time that we have seen this. There is an adjustment right. period from, you know, playing – uh, you know, Murray State at Iowa and playing <laughs> yeah. uh, the Liberty is a different, I don't care who you are, it is a different game. And I know that she set a, uh, I believe, a fever record in her first game with 10 turnovers, Scotty. Like, so <laughs> the game is faster, they're bigger, they're quick. You know, it's it's a, an adjustment period. I have no doubt she will adjust, but I'm with you. I would only be looking to fade uh, the public notoriety and the numbers that she's getting here. Uh, did you see the the ratings on that game? The highest yeah. rated WNBA game ever. So, I mean, that's good for the WNBA. It's great for the sport, but I'm still fading her with you, Scotty, until she has time to adjust to the speed of this game, to the athleticism. It's a different game, but I have no doubt she will adjust and be just fine as the season rolls on. But those numbers were gaudy in the first game. No, but in game number one, most people didn't even know the WNBA season even started. If it wasn't for Har, nobody would even know it was there. 
Yeah, well, that's it. You know, you're not setting Super Bowl records here. You know, it's not hard to go no. from zero to one, right? I mean, we're not, you know, we're not watching right. 15 million, 20 million people. It, it is still only two million, but she's brought so much attention. It just, you wonder oh. how long Joe will it last. Like, did anyone talk about it besides me when we brought it up? Probably not, right? That that's game one to game two. You know, because the game one didn't mm-hmm. go so well. So what happened game three? Is it gonna like really just die down? And this is what I think, yep. and it's not a knock on her or, or the WNBA, but it's just, you know, we've had superstar no. players for the league come in, the Inescu's of the world and all the others, right? And it's just, okay, it, it's it's there. It's, it's you know, uh, anyone thinking this is going to, you know, become like the fifth major sport, it's it's not happening. It just isn't. So, um, I would we'll see how long it lasts. I, I mean, and this is, right. And, and I think as she gets more acclimated to it and those point totals start to go up it, it'll be good but i would imagine the handle on the wnba is probably off the charts in her games too so it right. the bookmakers and well, you and i end. we've talked about this before but that will there end are though, edges to be had are... in wnba yeah and, and they're all betting on her right no one's betting unders at this point That's so correct. everyone is losing Right, they're losing on you're betting Indiana. They're losing on her point totals and everything else. And eventually, people are going to be like, "Well, f- forget this. I, I can lose in the NBA. I can lose yep. in the NHL and baseball. I don't need to go to the WNBA to lose." If they were winning their yep. bets, then it would increase. And that's why I mean by how many games do you give before people just say, "All right, forget about it. It's not worth it." Yep. Yep. Oh, listen, they, it won't be a, for a shortage of time. I mean, more eyeballs, more handle, more money. Uh, but like you said, uh, I don't know anybody in the public fading her. And the numbers right. are already shaded to the over. So this is uh, there's a lot of guys making a lot of money betting the WNBA right now. And it's we're just yeah. a couple of games in. We'll have an update with that when we get back here in Game Live primetime on... A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What, what's your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bet. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, off and running in-game live primetime here on the Sports Grid Network. And uh, the tip-off 
Uh, he are underway in Minnesota as the Timberwolves uh, trying to stay alive, push it to a game seven back in Denver. The Nuggets are saying, I don't think so. We want it to end now and get ready for the Western Conference final. Should be a good one here. We welcome in our good friend Mark Zinno uh, getting ready for this game here tonight. And uh, Zin, this has been a very interesting series to say the least. How are you approaching uh, this game six? How did you end up landing on it? I mean, it's one of those things where the short answer is I landed on Denver's team total over one-on-one. I'm kind of surprised to Ooh. see that despite the fact that the last three games have gone over in this series, odds makers open this up at its lowest number uh, for the total, that rather, for, the, for its lowest number of the entire series, and we get a depressed total here with Denver, who over the last three games is shooting 55.2% from the field and 46.8% from three. Uh, And that's the reason why these games are going over, because Denver is scoring. Now, you know, when I look at this, I think odds makers are expecting Minnesota to have an incredible defensive effort. Essentially, for it's an elimination game for them, almost a game seven type effort that you'll get. And typically, we get depressed totals in game seven. So I think there's some of that here. Um, But the problem is the T-Wolves aren't scoring, right? And so... The T-Wolves, if you're asking them to win a game where both teams score below 100 points, I'm not sure that I I like that game script for Minnesota at mm. this point because the better shooting team has been Denver. Even if Denver's offense slows down a little bit and the numbers normalize to around just 49 50% from the field and 41 42% from three, I think there's still enough there for them to clear this total. I think Minnesota, despite the fact that their defense is good, they're better off in a game where their offense is leading the way and they're scoring 110, 115, 120 like they did against Phoenix. Uh, and, and yep. you know, that is a, a game script that's better for them. Their offense just isn't doing it. I don't like the game script for Denver to try to win a game where both teams score below 100 points either because that means they're not scoring. So, you know, if this incredible defensive effort from Minnesota shows up on their home floor, which wouldn't be, you know, all that, that surprising in any size, way, shape, or form, but I just don't see Denver shooting all of a sudden falling back to earth like it did in games one and games two. Like, I just – I feel like they snapped out of it. I think that they are a team that knows that they are better than Minnesota. And now that they smell blood in the water with a chance to clinch this thing, I expect them to continue to shoot well. Yeah. I So do I, more. I mean, the problem is I find anyone – I can't find anyone that thinks Minnesota's going to win. And we kind of had that the other night with the Knicks and Pacers, and, and the Pacers win by 30 – or the Knicks win by 30 points, right? So, yeah. you know, Minnesota to me is the classic opposite pick. You know, I, I, I really do believe the first two games were the anomaly, and, and in reality the last three are what we're probably going to get later on tonight. So, a, any props that you like for the game? I mean, uh, props-wise – how do you not just take Jokic, you know, to go off? I mean, he's dominated in this series. He's reasserted himself. Not that he had to reassert himself, but he's now the best player on the planet after games one and two when people were writing this team off. Like, once again, it's like, oh, yeah, that guy Jokic is pretty good. So we know he's pretty good. Um, but he has owned Rudy Gobert in this series, and there's no reason not to think that over the last three games we're, we're not going to see more of that. I, it's a 9-2 opening run for the Nuggets. Uh, here with nine minutes to go. So the wow. Nuggets are just, uh, yeah, Minnesota is just, uh, it's Brick City here. And just now uh, the Nuggets are kind of pushing their will around here. I will say this, um, something happened to Murray and his elbow because he has been holding it after going up for a rebound on one of the first couple of mixed shots there. I don't know if you saw that. That may be a plus because Murray's shooting has been terrible this entire series. So the less shots he's taking, right, I'm kind well. of actually happy about it. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, look, I mean, the simple math is, is this. What Denver, in my opinion, needs to avoid more than anything is the quarter where they score less than 20, right? I mean, regardless mm. of the game flow, the game pace, all I got to do is have three 25-point quarters and one 26-point quarter, and that gets me to one-on-one. Like, this number is so low for Denver that – Unless they shoot as bad as they did in game two, they should be mm. in this. Be, I mean, I just think the number came down way too much here, and I'm trying to take advantage of it. Although a lot of money is coming in on the under, I've seen it, so I certainly understand it. And, you know, I, I think the average better is going to look at this and go, well, it's Minnesota and the under, Denver and the over. But still, if I'm Minnesota, I want to try to push this pace as much as I can here and then try to lock down right. defense when the game I mean, if you're Minnesota right now and you told, the Timberwolves, 
it's going to be a game where it lands under 100, and it's going to be a tight game heading into the fourth quarter. Well, who would you bet on to win that tight game in the fourth quarter? Would you bet on Minnesota? Because I wouldn't. I'll take the defending champs and the best player on the planet, you know, to win that game. So, again, I think that it's better for Minnesota to try and outscore Denver as much as possible. Yeah. Minnesota's in trouble if Denver comes to play. That, that's really the bottom line. It, it's oh, yeah. kind of like the yep. Bruins. I'm a Bruins fan. When, when other teams, they bring their A game, then, then you're not going to stop uh, you know, the, the uh, Minnesota or the uh, Denver Nuggets. Yep. Tomorrow night, as we, we trickle along with this postseason, Mark, it's yeah. taking freaking forever, but we only have one more game tomorrow. Knicks, Pacers, Indiana, down 3-2. Five and a half point favorites in the game. I mean, I'm trying to separate my fandom here, guys, but it still feels like a lot. It still feels like a lot. I mean, the Knicks continue to win games where they're scoring 120. Like, they finally put together a good defensive effort and shut down Indiana. But, I mean, again, I, I, the total here tells me to take this thing over, uh, and it's sort of a mini hedge because the Knicks have proven, guess what? Indiana can score 117, and the Knicks can still score 115, right? Like, that's not – their defense mm. is that bad that they're not going to stop the Knicks from scoring. So uh, I lean on the over here, and I, I I take the points with the Knicks. I still think five and a half is too much. We knew that seven in the opening game in, Minnesota, in Indiana rather was way too much. So uh, anything less than – anything more than four for me is probably too much for Indiana. Um, uh, quick question, uh, Zen. How many – Boston Celtic future bets have you made in the last 24? Have you got a lot of Boston uh, bets? Any? No? No Celtic? Okay. I, I, maybe I, for the I, best. I, I'm just saying maybe for the best. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> just leave it alone. Let's leave it alone, okay? You know, I mean, you're just finally getting over it. And you're bringing your track up. I'm but just saying, probably up. best oh, to avoid them. Up. Yeah, well, let's do that. And especially if the Knicks win. If the Knicks win, I can assure you, uh, the Knicks fan, there will be no more Celtic bets at all. Stay there, Zeno. In-game live. Prime time. We'll be right back. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you have? What, what's your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bet. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? R ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in, like, the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Well, a nice little run here by the Minnesota Timberwolves. Have them up 11-9 uh, right now. In-game total, 201.5. Uh, 
You can get the Nuggets at three I mean, and a half right now. Quick little turnaround there, a little timeout, a little little something, something. But it's all right. There's plenty of time left. I promise you. Nine points in the first two minutes and then haven't scored a point in five. Yes. Like, what? Why? See, this is what the Celtics do to you. This is what My the Celtics God. do to people here. I, yeah. I'm telling you, Scotty, this is what happens. You've been enough Boston teams long enough. You get scarred, and then you put everyone in that. You paint the same brush. I'm telling you, it's disgusting here. What have you seen here, uh, Scotty, by the way? Uh, 11 to 9 right now. It's been a little low for Denver, but the in-game total, 201 and a half. Are we getting 200 points here uh, in this one, Scotty, do you think? Damn well better. I still think so, right? Come on, Mark. Are we going to get I, I got the one and a half, right? I, we have to. I think so. Yeah. Can we get an alternate line with them? Can we get Denver at 106, say, or 107? Because they are going to have a 30-some-odd point quarter. Um, they are going to have right. a I mean, one of those. They have in the last three games. Why wouldn't they in this game? Right. Nine points Third in quarter. three minutes, and they, they haven't scored in the last five. Like, this is just, just – oh, God. I can't take this. Yeah. It's unreal. Well, but it's not all thinking, one and a half. So the boys in Vegas yeah, think exactly. the coming, right? Yep, they're not crushing it. Nope, yeah. and that was a turnover by Murray yeah. there, who I'm worried about now here, guys, because that arm does not look good. He turned it over because he can't dribble with his left arm, which is a problem, uh, it looks like. So worth keeping an eye on there because that's not great news uh, for them. They did just take a timeout, though, five and a half to go. It is 11-9 in-game total of 201 and a half here. How about the Mavs and Thunder? That game is on Saturday. You were on the show yesterday. I talked to you on Game Time Decisions, and, and I had asked you, hey, the winner of uh, the winner of this game win the series. Uh, and you said, if OKC don't win at home in Game 5, they're not winning the series. It's pretty much over. Are you still on that page? They can't shoot. They can't. Like, this is the best three-point oh. shooting team in the league. And they can't hit a damn three in this series to save their backside. Like they, they, they just, they, mm. I, don't, I don't know what is going on. And if you watch it, it's like almost painful. Like the, the, they're open Oof. looks, they're good looks, and they're just flat out missing. I mean, they, this is a team that shot 39% from three for the season, and they're under 30% in this series. Yep. Like, it, it just, there's no explanation for it. You know, there's just like there's a rim over the, over the, the basket for them. I, I, I don't understand it. I really, it, it's hard to figure out. I don't think necessarily Dallas is playing a ton of great defense. It's not making shots. And if you're not going to make shots, guess what? You're going to end up on the wrong side of, of, of games here. It. And they're going to walk into Dallas now and try to steal a game on the road. I, you know, game, stealing game four is different than not getting eliminated. And, and when you talk about the youth of a team, it's one thing to talk about the youth of a team in round one when it's a one versus eight seed. And, you know, they get a little hmm. bit nervous or whatever. It's a whole different thing when you're talking about the youth of a team and how to fight off elimination. That is a whole different set of mentality that this team doesn't yep. have yet. And so that worries me more than anything for them. Speaking of elimination, do you have any hockey action tonight? Uh, Rangers Carolina, 3-1 Carolina after two. I mean, are the Rangers going to lose three in a row? Like this is, you know, the Islander fan in me is sort of enjoying this from a view. Like just yes. from the team. Sure. You know, yes. This would be great. With three yes. lead and lost three is boy, would that make me feel so good? Oh, would it be I great. No, yeah. the, oh, I the garden, there would be friends, mutiny. All my Ranger friends, mutiny. all my, my former Rangers fans, I'll tell them to their face, yeah, that sucks, man. I'm really sorry. But inside, I'm going to go, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a shame. That, that is an absolute shame. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, a game seven would make a great weekend must, uh, must watch television for sure at the garden. And, and listen, if Florida doesn't uh, get off there, you know what? Uh, there'll be uh, another Game 7 here as well coming up. So a lot still to be determined in the NHL uh, playoffs here tonight. But nothing worse for the Rangers NHL are a than pretty good Florida, price. Carolina, Florida, Carolina, Eastern Conference Finals. Just shoot the oh, TV no. rating. It was terrible. It was terrible last year. Yes. Oh. You don't need yes. We need Boston yeah. and New York. We need Rangers and Bruins in the Eastern Conference Finals. Edmonton or Vancouver? Although tonight. I'll say this, Scotty. Oh, uh, I go Vancouver. Oh, over. 
Oh, yeah. everybody is on Vancouver. Damn it. Everybody loves yeah. Vancouver. I, we are going back over. We're, we're not getting another under. I'll tell you that right now. Zinn, appreciate it, man. Uh, let's go over 100 points. Denver will be back in Game Live Primetime. <laughs>
Yeah, I uh, kind of like uh, kind of like where you're heading in there. It is quite. It feels like uh, quite the black cloud there uh, over those <laughs> two uh, over that team there. Just saying, happens to uh, feel that way. Also, I don't know if that black cloud extended to the Phillies here because we we said they tied the game up with the Mets, then they took the lead, Scotty. And now the Mets have the lead. A 4-3 wow. game here is the... Uh, I cannot believe the Mets have come all the way back in the top of the eighth inning uh, to uh, to lead now 4-3. Wow. Uh, and also, the Red Sox, Scotty, have now decided... The bats have decided to come through here. It is 5-4 in the top of the sixth, so the over trending in that game. And the Pirates, uh, they keep scoring two runs. The Cubs keep scoring one run it was 4-3 it's now 5-3 top of the sixth and of all the games and all these runs scotty we don't have any runs with the a's in houston <laughs> yet uh and we're heading into the third inning yeah what what is going on with that oh yeah that was you know that was another strange you know at, at, a, at a world of a lot of strange lines today that that was one joe you know that over yep. under was nine for houston and oakland and and oakland's not been hitting but they have been pitching well uh the series is nine and one under their last 10 meetings in houston and Ooh. and we had nine with javier pitching for the astros who's pretty good and this yep. kid estes uh who's one and oh you know he's, he's a rookie uh, it's only a second start, but, you know, he's 1-0 with an ERA 1.80. I, I didn't understand how we were going to get 10 runs in this game unless I was missing something. So I'm not surprised with that. Uh, A's have lost, you know, four straight, eight of uh, 10. You know, they're back to being the Oakland A's. So we're kind of going along. We're bucking all these trends here because uh, the Red Sox are 1-6 and six their last seven, although that's kind of, you know, they're losing. Um, but the Phillies, 12-1 right. their last 13 at home. Uh, best record national league. Yeah. I, I would take a flyer on the Phillies against that, uh, you know, uh, less than stellar Mets bullpen. I I agree, and I think the uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think the Phillies have a is it a early game to no? They have uh, they're still at home tomorrow, taking on uh, the Nationals are coming to town. Right. So a little bit of the National League uh, East here battle uh, for them and the schedule. But you're right, Scotty. I mean, they have been. I mean, if it ain't broke, uh, don't fix it with them. They lost the first five tonight because the Mets had a 2 nothing lead, and they've done all their damage in the latter half. But kudos to, you know, Quintana uh, pitched uh, lights out for them here against one of the best-hitting teams in baseball here and didn't see that coming. But that's usually what you get at this point, isn't it? Uh, you use, every time you think... Uh, I got to go left here, and it ends up going right for a little while, and the Mets will not be outdone here, but I'm with you at plus 200, Scotty. Why are we not jumping yeah. on the Phillies here? Why not? In the, You know what I mean? Two more at-bats at least uh, in the – we're coming up bottom of the eighth, we'll have bottom of the ninth. I think it's well bottom worth eight. a uh, flyer. And, yeah. yeah, and why not back the Red Sox at home at plus 170 down a run, Scotty? Yeah, but, I and, mean, you know what? I don't know if your site will do it, but if you're going to bet the Phillies, you might as well bet the over eight and a half as well. Put them in a parlay if they allow that. Oh, love it's that. Four three. So if the Phillies love win, they, there's got to be nine runs, right? So if your love computer's that. goofy enough to allow it, then absolutely play it. Definitely. Yeah, you got the Phillies as home dogs right now. Red Sox home dogs. Yep. And that's only in the sixth inning. So there's plenty of time left in that game. You got yep. four at-bats. And then... Uh, even the Cubs, uh, although, again, that line had crazy written all over, but the Cubs down 5-3, yeah. plus 260. That's not too bad. Yes. And, and I don't know what kind of black cloud juju you're, you're sprinkling over there, but I believe a grand slam by Houston has now put them up 4 nothing <laughs> here, Scotty. I don't, yeah, there you go. I don't know what kind nine. of – I don't know. <laughs> That's why it was Don't nine. know what's going on, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> I you said it, it exactly and then you sprinkled it. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You want to know why it's nine? There you now go. That's why. why it's nine. Unreal <laughs> here. Uh, how about uh, Caitlin Clark and uh, the Fever don't look like they're doing so well here. Uh, last I checked, and then you follow the WNBA. Are they usually dropping 100, 110 points in a game or – uh, is this out of the ordinary with the Liberty beating the snot out of the fever right now? 
Yeah, this is that. Ooh. Oh. We got oh. a hockey goal. I heard we Vegas got a ranger goal. goal. Be... Yes. Ranger goal. Yes. Ooh. Yes. Three to two right, right now. Thirteen minutes to go. Six and a half, Scott. He's still the uh, the total, which is interesting here. But you can still get. I mean, hey, Hurricanes lay the goal and a half plus one ten. Uh, you can still uh, look at it that way. Maybe an empty net situation or. How much faith do we have in the Rangers to come back and win this thing here, Scotty? Uh, worth a stab with them to come back here? Plus 430. I do like Joe betting on these I... hockey teams that just score. Mm. You know, no matter what the score is, they can be down three goals, four goals. Give me the team that just scored. You know, the juices get flowing a little bit. The, the you know, effort gets picks up a little bit. You know, they were 11-1 to 1 to start the period. It's down to plus uh, 430. But even that's still a halfway decent price yep. with 13 and a half minutes left. So I, I would take a flyer, you know. Carolina facing elimination. You know, sticks are going to get tight here a little bit, no doubt about it. And we've not seen great goaltending I tonight, so. Love this. Love yeah. it. All right, so we're doing it. We're taking the Rangers plus 450. We're taking the Red Sox right now down a run against the Rays at plus 180. And the Phillies at Phillies. Plus, uh, plus what, 250, somewhere in that ballpark. And uh, we'll roll the dice and see how they do right now. A lot of dogs. A lot of yeah. dogs here, Scotty. Uh, and I'm all parlay. for it. Here. Oh, six nothing, by the way. Six nothing, Houston. Just throwing that six. out there to you. Oh, hey, we didn't talk about that Ooh. game for one second. Not one stinking second. It was just left alone. Yep. It was minding its own business. We had hockey. We had NBA. Yep. We had WNBA. We bring it up yep. one stinking time, and you <laughs> wonder why the runs aren't there, and boom, six <laughs> runs two minutes later. Boom. Two minutes later. Unreal. Wow. End of the third still. In game number 11 and a half. Unreal, Scotty. Absolutely wow. unbelievable. And 5 3 Pirates, uh, by up. the way. Cubs got out of it. I like the Cubs too at home at plus 225, to be honest with you here, heading into the bottom of the sixth. I think a handful of these dogs are going to come back and win these games here tonight. It's not going to be yes. this chalky. So I do think opportunities will present themselves. We have an update at the end of the first quarter. Minnesota-Denver, we'll get to that. When in-game live, primetime continues here on The Grid. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bet. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All 
All right, welcome back in in-game live prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Joe Ranieri alongside Scotty Wetzel as uh, we're keeping an eye in the second quarter. Uh, the Denver Nuggets trying to close out the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Scotty, it, it it started great for the Denver Nuggets early in this game. I mean, they made their first four out of uh, four out of six buckets, but. They have not made a bucket in a long, long time. In fact, uh, they went on a 29, they being Minnesota, went a 29-5 to run to finish the first quarter. Uh, 31-14 to was the final in the first. Now they are off and running in the second. It just started, but I, I don't know what happened. It, it just went, they couldn't, and they were settling for terrible shots. I mean, they were, Aaron Gordon shouldn't be chucking up threes. Uh, when he touches the ball in that end of the court here. But, you know, they it's a game of runs, right? So they withstood the first punch here by Minnesota. Uh they're gonna need to uh they're gonna need to fire back here, Scotty, in the second. Yeah, it's weird, John. I mean they, they were up nine to two. So from that point on, you, you mentioned it, they've been outscored thirty one to seven. I mean wow. Yep. Um Gordon, yep. no, no, no points. Uh, Porter Jr., five. You got the Joker with, with eight now, four of nine shooting. Jamal Murray is the one. You, you discussed it. Uh, one of seven now from the floor, two points. Uh, mm -hmm. He does have three assists, but that, that you know that, that's not going to cut it. So they're down 15. Like I said at the start, you know, I, I figured Minnesota would come out flying, right? Desperation, home crowd, facing elimination. I didn't think they would be leading by 15, but I, I figured they would be leading – I still think in the end, Denver's going to turn it on. Just weather the storm. No, don't go down by like 20 at halftime and not be in a game. You know, there's plenty of time left. So yep. keep it in that, you know, 10-point range. Uh, let, let Minnesota be all giddy, then turn it on in the third quarter. So, boys in Vegas, yep. they're only giving you four and a half with Denver, Joe. They're down 13 now, 33-20, and you're only getting four and a half. So, clearly, they think Denver's coming back. Really? Wow. Uh, yeah. All right. I see a total of 196 and a half. So I, I, it's certainly trending to the under and, and who can blame them? I mean, let's face it. The, the Nuggets got 14 points in the first quarter. We do need to put out a welfare check on Mark Zeno. Uh, you guys in the back, you may want to uh, give him I a call. for 14 him. points. You know, I didn't <laughs> want to ask him. I know he had the, the Celtics in game four. When they or, or game yes. five, whatever, or game four, when they only won by eight, right? Did he actually? I was afraid to ask him. Did he have the Celtics again in game yes. five when they won by fifteen, laying fifteen and a half? Don't tell me he had that. And you're gonna though. love this. L let me just let me. No, it gets even better than that. He didn't want to lay the sixteen points uh, in that pregame. So what he thought is that it was going to be such a blowout that the blowout was going to happen in the third quarter. So he laid four and a half in the third quarter. Even quarter. Yeah. Um, wow. Yeah. And the even quarter because uh, the Cavs showed up. So that was how uh, he is never again betting <laughs> the Boston Celtics. Celtics. I agree. Listen, the philosophy was great. I understood what he was doing. Hey, yeah. listen, they're going to come out. They're going to blow them out in a third, and then you don't want to risk laying 16 when they take their foot off the gas in the fourth. But give credit to the Cavs. They uh, they hung around there. And now I'm wondering, Scotty, you think being done in five like this, is this a hindrance to the Celtics? Because let's say let's say Indiana wins tomorrow, going to a seventh game, and, and how long will it be since they played, right? And then we're going to go on another one of these. It's been, what, five days, five, six days since they will have played? I always find these kinds of moments, at least early in that next series, where eh, maybe we should look to be fading the Celtics, uh, especially if this thing goes seven. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know what, Joe? The NBA Finals, which is only one series away for Boston, is not starting also, until the right, first correct. week of June. We're only in the middle yep. of May. We're, we're talking almost literally yep. almost a month for one series, three weeks. I mean, so no matter how long the Knicks uh, Pacers series goes, th there's going to be monster, monster days off, um, whether it's between the so two true. series or whether it's between the games. It's, it's nuts. There's just no reason to have three days off in between these games or even two days off. It, it's just 
but they, they're hell-bent on getting the NBA Finals. You know, we have the set dates in, in the second week of June and the third week of June, and that's what it's going to be no matter what happens in these yep. other series. So Przingis would be the one yep. where at least they're not playing, so you're happy, and then he gets the extended playing, you know, rest time. But again, it, it wouldn't matter if the Celtics were playing seven games or five. You know, it, that next round is not going to start until a certain amount of time because the NBA Finals are so far off. Now, I don't know what they if they said anything. I know they listed Ananobi out for game six tomorrow for the Knicks. Is there any, you know, talk or chatter or any reports that if they do make it to uh, take on Boston and they close this out, whether it be six or seven, that he has any chance of coming back for the rest? Have they ruled him out for the rest of the playoffs? Because I find it odd no. that they're reporting on his availability for game six. Is he out? Is he not? What's the deal with him? He's not, yeah. He's not out for the rest of the postseason. It's, it, everything is day to day. But oh. it's a hamstring injury, Joe. And, and hamstring injury, I, they just don't heal like a, a sore yep. thumb or something. They, they just don't. If if it's yep. to the point where you can't play, uh, then to me, he's done. The, the, those things take months. I agree. You know, I, I remember I'll date myself covering the Yankees when they had Ricky Henderson. That him and his hamstrings would be like, you know, he, he could have the slightest little yep. ache and he was down for a week, you know. So from that point on, with my mind with hamstrings, it's like they don't, you don't recover for those in, in a few days. So I, I'd be surprised no. if we're going to see him the rest of the postseason. I, I And I just don't know why they don't just rule it out uh, and – Stop pretending yeah. like there's a chance he's going to come back here. Right. 39-24 Timberwolves right now on top here of the Nuggets with about seven minutes to go. And uh, the Carolina Panthers blew a monster opportunity out in the front of the goal uh, to uh, to score pretty much what would have been the dagger uh, but weren't able to convert. So it's still 3-2, nine minutes to go. In that one, and again, Carolina trying to stave off elimination here, trying to get to a game seven. You got to love the playoffs this time of season. We've got we got urgency everywhere, and uh, we'll be back and uh, cover it all for you here as In Game Live Primetime continues on the grid. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour. Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that. And it's actually kind of bothered me that like all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you, what was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bad team. The Bostonian versus the book a lot of books and outside of the New York area the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes. Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston Toronto which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough close series. Sports Rage Late Night only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
Let's hear it. Come on. Give me it. Yeah, it is. The New York Rangers here with eight <laughs> minutes to go in the third have tied it up against Carolina. Boy, Scotty, that, that plus number was really good, wasn't it, with the Rangers? Uh, so 3-3 three, three now, it looks like. Uh, still plenty of hockey left to go here. And, of course, we've got you covered here on uh, In-Game Live Primetime on the Sports Grid Network. I'm Joe Ranieri. He is Scotty Wetzel. We've got urgency playoff hockey, Scotty. There is nothing like it. Uh, Kreider with the deflection, I believe, gets it past Anderson. And we are tied at 3-3. And I would imagine this thing number-wise, Scotty, has got to be, what, 7.5 now? 7.5 and, and pretty much even on both sides, would you say? Yeah, uh, pretty much 138 for Carolina, still favored. Uh, Rangers plus 108, seven and a half is your total, plus three to one. I, I tell you, you got seven and a half wow. minutes left. You know, you're, you're counting on an empty netter, so you need somebody to score. And then, you know, obviously have the other team uh, tie, get the job done as well. You know, you want to take a little flyer. I, we said it before, Joe, when it was five and a half and even six and a half. It's not because they're, you know, it's not of a, a lack yep. of opportunities, but it was 2-1 there. The, the both teams up and down the ice, you know, it's a great hockey game to watch. It's not like, you know, sitting in mud. So, I, you want to take over seven and a half? I wouldn't be surprised to see another goal being scored here, especially if you're the Rangers, right? If you're Carolina, it was a power play goal, bad penalty behind their own yep. net. Um, he pushed the guy into the boards. You can't do that without the puck. You know, he, he was far enough away from the boards where his face... Uh, slammed against the board. So it was a legit penalty. And uh, and they scored. So they blow a 3-1 lead. Rangers were 11-1 to to start the third period. And then when we took note of it, we said grab them, right? Plus the 430. They're worth the hunch. If you did, now I would yep. definitely, you know, uh, you know, hedge a little bit on the other side with Carolina. But I got a feeling the Rangers are going to win. Oh, this would be a tough loss if you're Carolina. Uh, 3-1 lead. Oh, I would be well. home. Oh. Gotta win. I, I mean, Gotta listen, win they had game. same thing last year against Florida when they eliminated them, too. They just, uh, those games, yeah. they had every opportunity to win that series, and they couldn't get it done. They buried themselves early against the Rangers, are making a valiant comeback. You've got, you know, you got a game six in your own building with an opportunity to force a game seven. Uh, 3-1, everything going their way, and uh, some terrible goals here across the board. Uh, and the Rangers give them credit. Uh, an opportunity here is they just missed the go-ahead goal. Uh, I'm not even sure what's happened uh, there, but they did just miss the opportunity to go up 4-3. Five and a half minutes to go there. Being outshot still 30-21, to 21, Scotty. So Carolina, as usual, you know, winning in a lot of the metrics, but not winning on the scoreboard with goals. And that's the biggest problem here. The Red Sox this, have just Joe? tied up Tampa. Boom! Wow. Five, five in that one now. Wow! Uh, real quick, get back to the hockey. You know, there's only five minutes sure. left to go, and you could bet whether the game will go to overtime. And you only have to lay minus two forty on the yes. That minus two forty usually is right. You know, like really? 13, 14, 15 minutes, right? You know, that's how much they think that there's going to be another goal that. If, you know, they're not giving you much on the no of a plus 175, you know. They, so, I mean, you would think five minutes left, it's going to go to overtime. I, that that number should be like minus four, minus five to one. I was surprised they even had it when I clicked it on a second ago. I didn't think it was going to be there. And now I see the minus 240 with five minutes left, tie game. Wow. They think another goal is coming. And you're seeing, and I'm – I – this could very well be one of those double overtime uh, periods uh, there, which, of course, you could look at. Or with how sloppy it has been, I don't know. Uh, are we going to get like we got in Edmonton last game there with 30 seconds left and Vancouver's <laughs> yeah. oh, sitting there crazy. trying to figure out, oh, my goodness, what had oh, happened? Wow. Um, I And it, th that's the other problem. That game coming up after this one might be delayed a little bit if, in fact, we do get overtime. But there's no way we're going under in this game. Are we here in uh, Vancouver with the Canucks and Oilers? There's there's no way we're getting another under, no? 
I wouldn't think so. Six and two over on the season, uh, you know, is, is the way that these two teams have gone. Vancouver's really owned them. I do like Vancouver plus small odds at home. You, know, you see the plus 120 yes. or so, depending on uh, where you do your shopping. Uh, I know they lost the last game, but you know what? They played well, being up two games to one, basically life and death on the line for Edmonton, and, and Vancouver still had the game tied at, at two with uh, 30 seconds left. So I like them. Yep. I, I like them, too. We'll have more on that game. We'll update you in Major League Baseball in-game live primetime here on The Grid. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because the Canadian. No, I cheer for my best. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff, and, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. Guess what we got? You know what that sound is. It's the all-important goal. And we got another one, Scotty. Oh, my goodness. Uh, the Rangers. Kreider now with a hat trick. Another disgusting goal allowed by Carolina. As uh, there are fans crying in the stands uh, with four minutes left because they know what's about to happen here. But 4-3 uh, now. The Rangers were down 3-1 in this game. They've come all the way back now to take a 4-3 lead. And, Scotty, now what is that? Will there be overtime prop? It, what's the price <laughs> on that? Well, yeah, and what I tell you, right? What, what would you say? When we when I looked at that line, we yep. looked at that line, they were begging you to take overtime at only minus 245 yep. minutes. I'd never seen a line that low. They knew another goal was wow. coming, and then sure enough, so overtime now, do they even offer it? Uh, you'd have to go to three-way money great. line plus plus 480. Uh, if, if the 60-minute money line, you have to go there. So plus 480 on the yes. They, boy, they mean, knew it. They knew that you, there was another goal coming with that one. Man. Yep. What a, wow. Freddie Anderson, just awful. over. You, you can't allow that. Awful. You just, you know, they had a little pass in the crease. He's got to block that. You know, somehow or another, he's got to block no. that pass. And he did. Nope. Blow and and Carolina deep. couldn't get the, the puck cleared. Like, what What are you doing? Right. What are you doing, Carolina? Like, get the puck out of your zone. Like, what What are you doing? Uh, very, very ugly. Kreider, though, I believe, with the hat trick here. 4-3, three minutes to go. 
But let's face it, we've seen Shastars can give up some ugliness here tonight, too. So uh, it's going to be an interesting... They're going to pull the goalie, and Scotty, like, right? So those that were yeah. brave enough to lay the puck in a half, <laughs> yeah. Rangers could get it. Well, and, and that's why we said that seven and a half at, at plus four to one was, was worth three to one, four yep. to one, whatever it was, was, was worth the flyer. I, I, we, I just had, we all had a sense that there was going to be another goal scored. And whether it's going to be yep. four, four or five, three with the empty netter, you have, uh, what, three minutes left or so. Um, I'm, I'm guessing Carolina Joe's going to pull the goalie, you know, depending on where the puck is and everything else. That's you what know, I'm thinking. Two and a half, to yep. two and a half minutes left, I imagine. So. Yep. Yep. Not good. Might be, and they missed so Not many scoring here, opportunities. Scotty. They hit the post one time, Carolina there. Yes. They had another shot with the guy right in front. It's just Durkin that wasn't, they wasn't able to score. I mean, they've had their opportunities here. Man. Yes. Yeah, they had two shots uh, with Shostarskin down low, and they kept throwing it right at his chest for some reason. Uh, yeah. So, you know, right there you kind of knew, oh, boy, uh, maybe it's not meant to be, and uh, it's not meant to be. But they did pull the goalie, 248 left to go. So this is uh, this is showtime now. We'll see. Oh, and they just had oh, and they missed it. Unbelievable, Scotty. They win the faceoff. Had it right in front of Shostarskin, and they shot it wide. Unbelievable. Uh, so wow. well, like, that's why you never want to blink in the playoffs. You see that one, Scotty? Oh, that was a good save no, by Shostarskin. Never mind. I, I got to give him credit. Yeah, you, you'll, he went, they win the faceoff, and uh, Shostarskin ends up getting it uh, done there. So still 2.39 to go in a 4-3 game. Uh, how about, they uh, need how about something. Madison Square Garden they, sh- they showed. They, they just showed Madison They're Square Garden, hats. you know, where the Rangers play. Sold out yep. crowd, it looked like. I don't know. Do they allow yes. them in for free? I don't know if they charge for that. But, um, I mean, I guess I understand, right? And you want, you want to be next yeah. to Ranger fans, so you kind of watch. Right. I, I guess, but that's pretty impressive. Oh, I see it now. Oh, wide <laughs> open. He had a shot. Oh. See that, Scotty? Wow. Had him yeah. right there right yep. there so now we've got another uh looks like a icing here with the rangers so they're gonna have another opportunity uh here in the end but my goodness uh everything worked low. out exactly the way they needed it and they just could not get it done i'll tell you who is getting it done though the philadelphia phillies have tied the mets up now in the bottom of the ninth inning that is heading to extra innings knotted up at four apiece there scotty that was another one of the dogs that we backed here in uh, in late there in the eighth inning going. No- yep. And that was off of Diaz, by the way. They tied that up. So now they're in top of the 10th, runner on second. I believe the Red Sox, also a dog, 5-5 uh, in that one. Pirates still leading the Cubs, 5-3. And the Astros, 8 <laughs> nothing there with the uh, against the Athletics. So things are going according to plan not going according to plan uh the nuggets here 55 to 33 scotty two minutes to go before the break uh and it's what's that scotty almost 22 23 points the in-game number is still only 14 yeah. 14 and a half here what what are Doesn't they expecting much... this monstrous second half comeback what i what don't am know I missing? Yeah, it's not like Minnesota's on the road. I mean, they were the favorites, whether we thought they should be or not. Yes. Bottom line is they were the favorites. So if the favorite is winning by as much as 22, as I said, 55-33, you, you would think that line would be a lot higher than 14 and a half. In fact, when they were up like 14 before, they were only laying four and a half, which didn't make any sense since they started the game as a two and a half point favorite, right? They don't seem to want to build that number up because they just Correct. assume Denver's going to make a run. So they're real reluctant to, to uh, you know, give you any kind of real value, if you will. But I don't know. Maybe they won't. You know, down 22. They've scored 24 points. And they had about four minutes into the game, three minutes into the game, they had nine points. They've only scored 24 points since. In well over a quarter and a half, the Denver Nuggets with the Joker and Jamal Murray and, and everyone else. Looking like we're having a game seven uh, in that Still one. need a, yeah. Yeah, no, no, no. We are definitely having a game seven, which I believe, Scotty, would be what in Denver? That would be Sunday? What or Saturday? I think that would be Sunday. 
Yeah, yeah I think that game would be see. Sunday. Let me, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let me to... uh, yeah, that let me would be Saturday is Thunder Mavericks. So I'm guessing that would be Sunday if we were going to yeah. have a game seven Sunday here, afternoon. right? So, yep, Sunday Sun- afternoon. Next... And uh, just, yeah, next you and us, uh, you so. and I, uh, Sunday, yeah. <laughs> we'll be covering that game. So that'll be an awful lot of fun. Also, I wanted to mention, by the way, uh, the uh, the PGA Championship underway here. And those that thought maybe, just maybe, uh, shout out to Scotty Scheffler, who took three weeks off, Scotty, away from golf uh, to celebrate the birth of his child. Congratulations. And so everyone thought maybe he was a little rusty. And they were right, Scotty. He was very rusty because he was only... <laughs> four under today in his first round of golf uh, yeah. in over three weeks so yeah Only a little rusty under. but yeah, uh, he yeah i mean yeah. it's yeah uh <laughs> xander shoffley shot a record on 62 today nine under par a record for the pga championship and you and i can both we bet know, him Scotty, to lose can we bet, is there a Scotty, you know exactly there? where i'm going yeah <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing possible for Xander Shoffley yes. backers to see him shoot nine under today and be the first round leader because we all know it doesn't get better than that. So Rory, five under par, by the way, great day for him. Colin Morikawa, also five under. So the leaderboard, including uh, the champ, Brooks Kepka at four under. There are an awful lot of guys Big names uh, within four or five shots. So it is going to be one hell of a weekend for the PGA Championship, the second major of the season. Uh, all right, still uh, a minute to go here. Empty net and all Ken Carolina gets something on Shesterskin with an opportunity to tie it. Well, don't go anywhere because anything can happen in uh, in the NHL and the playoffs here. And... We're getting ready to come to the break in Minnesota with the Denver Nuggets right now, 57 to 38 with less than 60 seconds to go. Just an embarrassing effort. Oh, empty netter. There it is. Game over. Rangers close it out. They will await the winner of the Florida Panthers and Boston Bruins here. Well, who are we kidding? They're waiting for Florida. And they'll get them. We'll talk about that next year in Game Live Primetime. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour, Taylor. Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you have? What, what's your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks still <laughs> exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because of the Canadian. No, I cheer for my bets. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking, I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop, like I, like I took with Boston Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's gonna be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. Because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions. 
only on SportsGrid. All right, welcome back in in game live prime time, and it is over in Carolina as the New York Rangers close out the Carolina Hurricanes four games to two with a 5 3 final there. And Scotty Wetzel uh, was giving out overs in this game. We told you to take the Rangers, uh, there was all sorts of great opportunities in game. And uh, it even worked for those that might have had Carolina pre-flop, like Cam Stewart. They certainly gave us every indication, Cam, that, yeah, Carolina, even with a two-goal lead, might be in trouble here and gave you an opportunity at least to bet out of it. I got to tell you, I'm so impressed with the Rangers. They win every overtime game. They come back. Oh, Carolina had all the pressure, crazy. all the momentum. And the Kreider's my guy. Like, that's the type of guy I want on my team. He is so clutch. Like, every time. I just love this guy. I love the way he plays hockey. Chesterkin looked a little bit tired, but you know what? Now they're going to be revamped. Mm. I think the Rangers can beat either Florida or Boston, whoever they play in the next series. I bet Carolina, when it was 3 nothing in the series, Joe, it was a crazy, crazy price. I had to get out once the Rangers tied it, so yep. I'm happy I did because I got something out of the deal and still made a little bit of money, but – brutal like you're you're at home and you blow a two-goal lead in the third period like that that's unacceptable hey they pulled the leaves I'm, I'm used to seeing this i'm not a carolina fan but i tell you i see it a lot but joe and scott who cares because i got real news xander shopley first round leader bam minnesota timberwolves race to 10 race to 20 first quarter first half everything else is great in my world right now, except for the Carolina Hurricanes. But you know what, guys? I gotta tell you, Joe. I I, I come to like a, an epi- a, what's it called? Epiphany, whatever the I, whatever the hell it yes. is called. But, yeah, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Like, a rea- yeah. realization. I'm done betting games with full game. I'm a first round leader, first period guy, first quarter guy, race to 10, 20 guy. Because you know what? They win. Love it. I'm telling you, Joe, every time I have nah. a game, it's heartbreaking at the end. I'm done. I'm, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this is going to be my new strategy. I'll put a little bit on the game. Just play it in game. Ooh. Do whatever. I'm done with putting bigger pregame bets down on these games. We hit Xander Shoffley back-to-back weeks, first-round leader. I'm done. Let's get to this Edmonton uh, uh, Vancouver game yes. while we're at it. Let's talk first yep. period. Give me the Vancouver Canucks in the first period plus 125. Rick Talk gets a little fire on their, under their asses, and they got to come out hot in this game. As I say, Joe and Scott, mm. I don't know if they're going to win the game, but I like them early in the game, and that's the way I'm betting right now. Give me Brock Besser. This guy's an absolute animal. First goal scorer, plus 850. He's had a natural hat trick in the first mm. period. The guy's on fire. He's plus 175, I think, for an anytime goal, but I'm going to take him for the first goal scorer in this game. I have no opinion of the total. I don't know who's going to win this damn game. I just think Vancouver comes out and gets a lead in the first period. <laughs> That's the way I'm playing it. I, honestly, Scott, I've been thinking about this. I, I'm looking at my records because I write it down on paper. I'm like, you win every first quarter and half bet, but you get heartbroken every game. So why the hell am I betting games? Yeah. I'm just going to take yeah. this. Is, that's what, It's like horse racing. It's quick. I know. But I'm like, yeah, Minnesota's up 11-9. Yes, yes. Yeah. It's like quarter horse racing. I love it. And you know what? I don't have to wait yeah. all night for some result that punched me in the face. I'm doing it, Joe. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm looking like everything is horse racing to me now. Nice and easy. I love Quick. It. Over in like with an hour. With your Hamiltonians. Four. Yeah, yeah, you, you get with it. With your Hamiltonians with the different heats. Yes, you know, yes, just, just yes. I am so second done year. with waiting on games and getting <laughs> depressed in the third period with Amen. the Leafs. Now with Carolina. Screw you. I'm a guy. Mm-hmm. I need more money first round in golf than I Then at the tournament I'm sitting there on Sunday. Hey, honey, we came in second again. Oh, Cameron, did you bet too much? <laughs> yes, I did, Lisa. But who did you like this week? Did you tell me to take take afternoon nap? How are you guys doing, Seth Straka? So I go up to her, and she goes, yeah. I get it. Now, now, we're having a team meeting after this, and I'm, I explained to her. I called her. I go, honey, we just won the – she does bets with me. I go, we just won first-round leader with Xander Shoffley. She goes, that's two weeks in a row. I go, we're, we're like, that's what that, – this is the way I'm doing it now, What Joe. was the price I know on him? So what we're doing it. What was the price? 31 I, I got. 21 to 1 I got. A lot of people 20, got 25. Yeah. I got 30? 30. 
Yeah, 30. 30? First Isaiah round leader. Shoffley? Really? Yeah. Wow. Because, Scott, you know what they do in first-round leader bets? Another reason to do this instead of the tournament. All the chalk gets better odds in the first round, and all the guy, all the underdogs get worse odds. Right. Yep. Because, it, because it's a fly-by-net night bet. Who the hell knows? Eric Cole could have the lead for all I know. But Xander Shoffley, right. all I know is this. He comes out wow. of the gate hall. He's a horse. He's a mm-hmm. horse that runs. And then Joe, as you know, coming down the stretch, Xander Shoffley with the lead. Oh, he's fading. He's fading. He's fading. He's caught. Second place. He can't get it done. Boom. Another second for Xander. Take him early. Fade him late. That's, That's so the best. That's so true. Murder to be on Sports Grid. <laughs> <laughs> he's plus I'm losing 240 my to win. <laughs> There's what? no way in the world I bet him a plus two. If you bet him at plus two forty to win, just that's crazy. Sure. If he wins, if he wins, God bless you. That is with this guy's track record, he had to be. He have to be at least. Yeah. What do you What do you need, Joe? Five, six minimum. Like, I, what do you need? I don't need anything. Yeah. I, I don't, don't need because either. he's going to lose. So I got, I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah. to trust me. He ain't going to be there on Sunday. And I was Woo. telling him, okay, I was telling Scott, I said the worst possible thing for somebody who had Xander to win the tournament was to wake up today and see he was nine under par leading the tournament. You're right, now Joe. you're guaranteed that he's going to be an absolute mess cup. Look at the guys behind him, Cam. Look at the list of guys I within have four or five shots. Kepka, oh, it's Deschambeau, crazy. I think he's a three or four. Oh, no, oh. everybody's there. Tagala, yeah. a lot of people like. Yeah. You know, trust me, Xander's going to feel it tonight. Yeah. He'll have one good night's sleep. He might do it again. And when the weekend comes, just watch the fade train. Boom. No more fairways. Yep. Lips of bunkers. Nope. Three putts. It's a disaster. Yep. But I learned one thing. I hope Bet he's paired up with Rory. Round. I right? hope he's yeah. paired up with Rory on Sunday. <laughs> He's done if he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love it. But, but am I right, Joe? Like, I'm looking at my track record going, oh, like, so true. I, 10, 20, like, all these other bets. Like, why do I even, like, stay around yep. for the game? That's my new thing. Lower units on the game, smashing stuff early. If it loses, it loses. If I win, I got money to play with the whole game. That's right. Is this a lot more drinking? Uh, yeah, the... a lot more drinking. That's right. Bet on Done. Xander Shoffley early. Fade him on Sunday. Yeah, you guys yeah, got yeah. it. We're, we're going to win That's this week, right. Joe. And... I feel it. I feel it. <laughs> yeah, I, feel I it. love it. I love it. Plenty of opportunities here is what Cam is saying. And uh, he'll be up top of the hour with Gabe Marenzi. We'll close it out next. A surprise winner on the PGA Tour. Taylor Hendrick ends up winning his first PGA Tour win. He was pretty darn lucky to win. Ben Coles should have won that tournament. Also seeking his first PGA Tour victory, he went into the 18th hole, the easiest hole on the golf course, with a one-shot lead, and he was there in two, just less than 30 feet from the cup. Newswire, only on SportsGrid. The Bostonian versus the book. Do Leafs fans stop watching hockey now, or do they, do they root for other Canadian teams, Cam? No, I'm not a proponent of that, and it's actually kind of bothered me that, like, all the people in Toronto are kind of like, oh, now I'm going to cheer for the Oilers. Like, why? What do you? What was your affiliation with the Oilers? Like, Canucks <laughs> still exist. Like, I don't lose automatically and say, yeah, you know, I'm going to cheer for the Ottawa Senators because the Canadian. No, I cheer for my best. The Bostonian versus the book. A lot of books and outside of the New York area, the uh, the Canes are actually favored in game one of this series. I'm seeing it right now. I'm looking. I see a minus 115 Canes, Rangers minus 105. I like the six and seven games prop like I, like I took with Boston, Toronto, which we now know is going to cash. Uh, I think it's got a chance to go the distance. It's going to be a long, tough, close series. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. The Cam Rising stuff last year with Utah? Three months of pretending he was questionable with a torn ACL? Ridiculous. It's a lot of gray right now when it comes to this stuff. And, and it, we really are. When people say we're in like the second or third inning of sports betting, that's why I agree. 
because there's so many of those situations that are very, very difficult to explain to a novice. Game time decisions only on Sports Grid. All right, welcome back in in-game live prime time here on the Sports Grid Network. Here, final segment before we give way to Gabe Morenci and Cam Stewart. Top of the hour, they no doubt are getting ready for the Vancouver Canucks uh, and the Edmonton Oilers. And uh, Scotty, Cam liked uh, first period uh, Vancouver at home. I kind of feel like maybe first period over is not a bad look either. Uh, how are you approaching this uh, game coming up? Well, I tell you, you know, it, uh, you got to pay a hefty price, but uh, how about Vancouver plus their goal and a half? Uh, every Vancouver Ooh. playoff game this year, all eight decided by one goal or more. So, you know, give me, give me the underdog plus the goal and a half. Uh, I'm guessing Calvin Pickard starts in goal for Edmonton again tonight, Joe, since he did fairly well, you know, game number four, they, they won. So I'm expecting a backup to be back in there uh, a little different on the road than, than at home where you get the fans behind you. I like Vancouver. Like I said, they, they dominated this series seven and three, their last 10, six and two this year played well, being up two games to one. I know they lost game four, but still, you know, they didn't get rolled over like many people thought they would. You're getting plus odds, 115, 120 or so. Uh, I like to think in Vancouver come out flying. So uh, I'm okay with that. You know, even laying the half a goal plus odds on Vancouver, get the almost two to one on that. So give me the Canucks all the way through. All kind of goofy bets. Uh, I'm betting Vancouver tonight. Yeah, I uh, I don't uh, hate it. I'm going to take a little flyer on uh, both teams to score in the first period, too, at plus 160. So... Let's uh, and give me the. I'm just going to correlate all of them. Give me Vancouver first. Give me both teams to score and give me over a goal and a half and let the uh, chips fall uh, where they may in here. Five three, the final Rangers advance. Uh, Scotty, are you thinking the, uh, the Panthers? They're playing uh, and what should be a pretty good Eastern Conference Finals. No. Yeah, um, you know, I, and I got a feeling Florida's going to win tomorrow night, Joe. I'm a root for Boston Bruins mm-hmm. fan, uh, but you know they don't score. You know, two goals or less in seven of their That's last the eight, unless the goaltender completely stands on his head, whoever it may be. You know, it's been mostly Swayman, but they don't win games unless he does. And uh, he was able yep. to do it game five. I don't think that he's going to do it game six. I think Florida does win tomorrow night, so I, I would grab the Panthers. Them being road favorites tells you a little something. And uh, if it does come to Florida versus the Rangers, I got to see the Rangers do it again. Give me for the Florida Panthers in the series. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, and, and really the Panthers didn't play the first 12 minutes of the first period and it ended up costing them the game because they dominated Boston right. the rest of the way and just couldn't do it. So I think you'll see a much more motivated Panthers uh, team early in that game tomorrow what about colorado a lot of people stuck a fork in them scotty are, are, is colorado alive and well here is there life for the abs yeah clearly right boy i tell you what joe Color, mm. or, uh, florida game five chance to clinch home ice lose rangers game five chance to clinch home ice loses uh and then uh dallas uh home dallas. Ice chance to clinch game five loses i mean so Rangers are able to win game six. I think Florida does, and I get a feeling Dallas does as well. Uh, All these teams will win the next time out, game six. Yep. Could be fun. Second half coming up here, Scotty. It's a 19-point Timberwolves lead, 59-40. to That is right. The Denver Nuggets scored 40 points, 14 in the first, 26 in the second they are down 19, and yet I still feel like, Scotty, there's uh, there's an opportunity. The in-game number is 12 and a half, Scott. They're down 19. It's 12 and a half. You got to be kidding me here. Uh, do you think the Nuggets make a big move here and uh, close the gap? I think they do. I, I'd put a couple shekels on the 12 and a half, and I think if they get it within 12 and a half, they're also going to really make a serious run. So I would make a plus 630 bet as well. Maybe they don't come all the way back and win, but somewhere along the line, Joe, 
Minnesota's going to be less than a 630 favorite, and you're going to be able to hedge. I, I, I think this is going to be a two or three possession game in the fourth quarter. How about Minnesota? What is Denver's yep. line if you have it there real quickly, third quarter? Because that's when it's probably going to happen. Oh, right? I like that. Third, take the Nuggets third quarter. Uh, yeah. Third Let's quarter spread, that. Nuggets minus one and a half, minus 120. Really? Minus wow. 120, I, yes. I yes. thought that was going to be four and a half or five and a half even. Oh, I like that a lot. I like that a lot. Yep. I'm with you there. Like it. On it. Uh, see, yeah. plenty of opportunities to attack this card here tonight. That's what we do on in-game live uh, prime time here. We've got a lot left to go on here tonight. Cam Stewart and Gabe Morenci coming up next. Scotty and I will see you again tomorrow. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of the night. Whether it's a chart or a block or, a, a, you know, a, a deflection that was wrong or.